feeling a little bit like Captain Kirk today. Hello, it's Matt O'Leary, and this is Albums at a Glance for winter 2017, 2018. It's probably about three or four months in most places, but here it's about six, seven. There are just a ton of records coming up. I'm really looking forward to in the next couple weeks, actually. Like, we got The Voids this Friday. We've got uh, Y Oak. We've got... Um, Hop Along has a new record coming out. We've got Unknown Mortal Orchestra, which is probably my most anticipated release of the year so far. So lots of good stuff down the pipe, um, but I've missed a lot over the past few months and I thought I'd comment on it. So I'm gonna start with the albums that uh, were a little more disappointing. First off, it's the new album from Bibio called Phantom Brickworks. And this one is pretty much strictly ambient sound. So much different than the pop laden stuff from the past. And honestly, it just kind of bored me. I really do love a lot of this guy's stuff. I listened to the whole discography on a road trip to Colorado, which is like a day-long drive. Um, and I, I loved Town & Country. This one, just meh. Then there's a new one, Rock Island, from math rock band Palm. And this one, just those steel drum guitar sounds got really old really fast. Ooh, then for the final disappointment, it's... Uh, this one's a little more controversial. It's Sufjan Stevens' little Carrie and Lowell add-on album called The Greatest Gift. All the B-sides here, not the, the remixes, so the new songs sound like Carrie and Lowell songs, but just not quite as memorable. I might be alone in this opinion, but I feel like that is such a special album that it just needs to be left alone. Like, don't revisit it, don't try to recreate the sound. Honestly, those remixes of songs like Fourth of July, that song is so perfect. Like, don't mess it up. Okay, now that half of you have left in a mad rage about Sufjan, let's get to some albums I liked. First off, it's British IDM producer James Holden, who's assembled a band called The Animal Spirits. This one came out in late 2017. It's called The Animal Spirits. Don't expect a constant barrage of electronic pulses, like something from Apex Twin. This one's totally different because of the band, because of the acoustic instrumentation. It's definitely more influenced by prog and jazz. Most of the tracks are built around some repetitive, trance-inducing riff or groove, but it's how the instruments just weave in and around each other that's just astoundingly beautiful on most of these songs. The song The Beginning and End of the World is like that. It's got this clever chord progression that feels like this never-ending ascension. It's celestial and ethereal at times, but it's also aggressive and chaotic when it needs to be. This one is a must-listen. Mm, this next one is the most fun I've had this year. It's a band somehow I've managed to ignore for the last few years, but it's the British indie pop band Django Django with their fourth album, Marble Skies. I'm such a sucker for those Brian Wilson vocals, you can't go wrong there. This is such a consistent set of upbeat and catchy as all get out songs, but it's not paper thin. It's got some sophistication to the instrumental texture and melodies. I love that organ and that springy bass on Champagne or that hyperspeed shuffle and roller coaster of vocal harmonies on tic-tac-toe. In Your Beat is my feel-good song of the year with its just pure synth pop danceable bliss. This one never slows down, it never gives up, it's never gonna give you up, and it's just fantastic hook after hook. Folk Sisters from the Staves collaborated with the Sextet Chamber Ensemble Y Music on The Way Is Red. New York-based Y Music's done some pretty cool indie projects in the past years with the likes of Jose Gonzalez and Boney Vare and Ben Folds. Man, oh man, are there some jaw-dropping moments on this thing. We start with this lavish acapella piece, and then it's followed by this tumultuous tune called Take Me Home, which sounds like a thriving metropolis of flying insects. Oh, then it's trouble on my mind. That melody is mm, just mellifluous and just leaves you starry-eyed. My favorite moments are the more structured songs with clear verses and choruses, like Trouble on My Mind, like Appetite, but there's a nice balance of those more traditional songs with these weird and opulent experiments. Stunning harmonies and challenging arrangements, this is a good one. Next up is a solo debut from Frontier Ruckus and Failed Flowers member Anna Birch, it's called Quit the Curse. This is some jangly indie rock like always, or like jail, but it's got the lyrical directness of like a Julian Baker. Anna's got this 
deadpan delivery that just no vibrato whatsoever so when she holds a note out it kind of just sounds like a keyboard that can make her seem emotionally disconnected or apathetic and while this bland indie rock sound isn't all that memorable the melodies and the lyrics are very much so my highlights are what i want and asking for a friend and tea soaked letter those are great songs now for another artist with a somewhat austere or, or just sober vocal delivery it's porches with the house never been a huge fan of this guy's low-key synth pop sound but the more melancholic moments of this record really stuck with me like the shimmering aquatic tones of now the water or the drowsy auto-tune heavy w longing he's got a very alex g like voice and alex actually has a guest spot on the opening track here the house feels more like a like a sketchbook of spontaneous ideas rather than a fully fleshed out product but i I did end up really enjoying this one and that in part is what makes it feel so fresh. King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard's fifth album of 2017 came out on New Year's Eve and like they promised this is a kind of a mixed bag of unrelated tracks so sort of a b-sides album but definitely not b-sides quality stuff. It's called Gumboot Soup. Ew. And yeah I, I totally love the Nonagon Infinity or the I'm in your mind fuzz heavy garage psych King Giz but I, I gotta say I've always had a soft spot for the softer material like sketches or like paper mache dream balloon recently they've been incorporating more electronics and more auto-tune which i've just been crazy about honestly so it's those type of songs that are my favorites here and honestly some of my favorite king giz songs ever like last oasis that jazzy groove is everything toward the end of the song everything starts to fade into this murky shadowy kind of muffled production and then slowly re-emerges into its full clarity and crispness. And Superposition reminds me of the song Inner Cell from Polygon Wanna Land. Amazing song, the flutes, the rubbery bass, they've really made that sound their own and I hope to hear more like it in 2018, but hey guys, come on, take a break. <clears throat> Chris Illingsworth and Nick Blacka and Rob Turner make up the experimental jazz trio from Manchester called Go Go Penguin. Their new one, A Humdrum Star, bursts with virtuosity, but also a refreshing amount of restraint. It plays a lot like a soundtrack, with atmosphere coming before technicality. The keys are very spacious and very reverby and very repetitive. Then Rob's frantic, cymbal-heavy drumming comes in to bring you back down to earth. This is the formula on tracks like Raven or Bardo, while others like a transient state or reactor take a much more playful approach with everyone just sort of hammering away with much less delicacy or solemnity. I wish they took the electronic flourishes a little bit further because when they're in there they're so good but Overall, it's a really cool record. This next group is a new trio formed from members of Shearwater and Cross Record. I'd say it's a pretty good synthesis of those two bands. It's kind of folk-tinged art rock. Emily Cross's sultry voice is just so full and robust. It reminds me a little bit of Jen Wassner from Y Oak. Some of my favorite tracks are Joy or the lumbering shadowy sun dogs. They just pull off that dusty folk, sort of no country for old men sound so well. There's a perfect balance of this creepy ambience like on White Glass or I Don't Want Children, along with these soulful melodies like on the closer Black Willow or the incredible dark oscillation this is not one to miss. There were a number of other albums I liked from the past few months, which I'll just briefly mention here. The first is Tiger and Hamasayan, and a follow-up to the stellar and ancient Observer, which made my top 10 for last year. Um, and this one's a little EP. It's called For Gayumri or Jayumri. If you like that just crazy virtuosity from the last one, this one's more of the same. Then there's the, the intricate and moody guitar album called Opus from Al Di Miola, who's uh, one of the guitarists for Return to Forever, which is a really great jazz fusion band from the 70s with Chick Corea. Then there's the pop band Caro Caro Benito with a new little EP. It's called Totep, which probably is an acronym for something, but that first track is uh, oh, so good. 
For some jazz, check out the Bobo Stenson Trio's new album. Then there's S. Carey, who is a member of Bon Iver. He's got a new album called 100 Acres, and this is very sweet, very light, very easy listening folk rock. The last up, it's Starman Jr.'s Pearl and Waves to You by Teen Dreams, two kind of obscure psychedelic pop releases. Ooh, that is a lot of music. It's time to wrap it up, time to maybe rest the ears a little bit no that's ridiculous let me know what you think of the albums and as always thank you so much for watching